Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's Let's Play, we're going to do a tutorial playthrough of Manstein's or Manstein's War, Decision in the West, 1940, published by Decision Games in World of War Magazine number 84. The game is designed by Joseph Miranda. It uses a modified version of the boot system, which is a, basically you're drawing command markers, so it's a chit pull um, style of game. It's a two-player game, but with the chit pull aspect it's very solitaire friendly um, before i dive in i do want to thank decision games and doc for sending me this review copy to show off to you guys all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do kind of an overview just a quick overview of the game um, of the units you know the map uh, or sequence of play and then we'll dive into the playthrough itself so let's go ahead and do the overview All right, so Manstein's War, like I mentioned before, uses a chip pull style of system, um, the boot system as they call it. So what this means is it is a uh, hex encounter game, pretty common, you know, standard looking at a counter here, right? You have the size of it up top, you know, three X's, obviously it's going to be a core, four X's will be an army. Um, those are most of the units going to be army or core size um, for the scale. You're going to have where it's attached to. So, for instance, the 1AG is 1st Army Group. Um, you're going to have the unit designation itself on the right-hand side. So, 2nd British Expeditionary Force, 2BEF. You have an attack and a movement. Um, if it has three numbers, there'll be attack, defense, and movement. Top left will tell you how many um, how many steps the unit has. So, this one you know, says two. So, if it takes a hit, we flipped over, it says just one. There are some multi-step or multi-counter units. Um, in the middle, of course, has NATO symbology. This would be infantry. And in the top right, R5 means it'll be reinforced on turn 5. So pretty standard um, counters. Hexes are very large. If you saw my recon, my unbagging of the game, the hexes are very large. So I have, it's not a historical setup. So the game for setup has a variable. Um, basically, you are assigning. The allied player sets up their units and then giving the German the advantage, which, I mean, I think you could admit they had the advantage just in this campaign in general, um, for different various reasons. Uh, reasons. So the Allies uh, set up first wherever they want, within certain restrictions, obviously. Dutch units will be in the Netherlands. Um, you know, we have units for Belgium. You have the French and then the British. Um, and then the Germans set up afterwards. So I went ahead and set up semi-historical. What I mean by that is, for instance, the army groups um, for Germans I have set up around where they were you know army group A set up near the Ardennes here semi-blocked by the unit but you can see the Ardennes the forest here um, army group C down here army group B up here um, then you have the PGK the Panzers um, right over here so set up semi-historical um, with the game you know let's run through the sequence of play pretty quick so with the sequence of play, it starts off during the initiative phase. You determine which player has the initiative. Very simple. The German player has initiative, which means they're going to get to draw first from their cup of command markers, unless the allies have seized a German city, which can happen. Um, a particularly vulnerable city is Saarbrücken, or Saarbrücken over here. Again, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. I am a, an American who lives in the Midwest, the United States, so if I mispronounce the European name of something, please, I beg your forgiveness. If the Allies are able to seize or the German cities, they gain the initiative. Otherwise, the initiative goes to the Germans each turn so they could draw from the command markers. So that's the next phase, command marker phase. You are um, assembling. So the beginning of a turn, you're assembling the command markers um, into your cup. Now, the game's going to tell you each turn. There may be some that you pick. There may be some that you are assigned every turn. Um, many of the special ones that when you use them, they are removed from the game. So they're used one turn and that's it. Otherwise, you're going to have kind of the, the standard, you know, activating your army groups. Those are going to be every turn and return to your cup. After that is the refit phase. So the first phase is not drawing. It's just assembling your cups. The second phase is, or the third phase, excuse me, is the refit phase. So you're going to check the refit points on the track for the Allies and the Germans. Each nationality is going to have a number of points. First turn, nobody gets any. Starting with the second turn, different nationalities, depending on the hour, get those refit points. You then immediately spend them or expend them to, there's a chart, it'll tell you you can do different refit options, restoring a ground unit that's reduced to full strength. If it's in an enemy's zone of control, it costs more. Um, replace a mobile supply unit. Supply is a key part of this game. 
um, refit a reduced air unit or replace an eliminated airlift, which actually is a optional rule, the airlift supply for the Germans. Now, when it comes to, um, remember I mentioned um, restoring a ground unit that's reduced. Once a unit is eliminated, it is eliminated. It cannot be re restored. So you want to try to avoid having units completely eliminated, reduced. I mean, it's unfortunate for you, but you can actually, you know, refit them if they're eliminated. No go. They're out of the game for good. So after those three phases, you get into the operations phase and you have the first operations impulse. So this is where kind of the meat and potatoes of the game, right? The actual gameplay. Um, this is where you're drawing. So for the command segment, um, the first player, which determined by initiative, which first turn will be the Germans. And then going forward, could be Germans, could be allies, usually is Germans. But if the allies are smart and lucky, they maybe get the initiative. You're going to draw from the cup. So you draw a random command marker or draw a chit. Um, unlike some chip bowl games that are, you know, everything goes into one big cup in this one, each side will go back and forth. So the Germans say you have the initiative first turn, you're going to go ahead and draw from the cup, except technically on the first turn, the Germans get to pick theirs marker because then, you know, obviously it's the right. It's the launching of the battle for France, 1940, launching of the operation, launching of the campaign. You, it gives the Germans the advantage to say, okay, we want to do this chip. Now, looking at the command markers, like I said, it's chip pull. If you're familiar with chip pull at all, very simple. Say, draw HGA. That's going to be Army Group A for the Germans. Um, for the Germans, they do have, again, just like the Allies, they have special ones. And you'll see this when we play. But, for instance, you may say, oh, I want to put the, and I haven't put them in here because I just was, uh, before we start the actual gameplay, you're going to select a special either plan, um, OKH plan, Okay, it's modified plan or the Manstein plan, Manstein plan, um, which you get to then implement um, as you choose. So you're drawing from here. You're then activating the commands. Now there's a reinforcement segment within this operations phase. So you check the turn track. And if it has, you know, reinforcement that is part of that army group, part of that um, group of units that's being activated, you go ahead and place them. The rules tell you where to place them. Then you go to the air operations segment. Here is where you can use your air units which the Germans have the advantage for sure, but the Allies do have some air units. Um, you're gonna deploy them onto the map. There's generally a couple things you're doing is you are doing either city bombing, the Germans can bomb cities, which reduces their defenses. The Germans and Allies can do the rest, which is air superiority, which will basically have right air units fight each other, or ground support. Um, you can have you know your units do a, a shift, a shift on the CRT um, to help your guys later in combat. After you've done all the air operations and you've kind of assigned according to what each um, command marker has. And so what, what I mean by that is that you'll draw a command marker and say the Germans draw command uh, Army Group A. They can activate Army Group A, their units. They also can activate three air units. So you can't just do all of them at once. All right, the next phase or the next segment, excuse me, is going to be the ground movement segment. Just pretty standard when you go ahead and activate your units. You're going to go ahead and move them by their movement factors and move them around the map. Very standard, very simple. Um, same thing for combat, and that's the next segment. You're gonna go ahead and engage in combat, keeping in mind you have those air support unit enhancements, you know, changes in the shifts and modifiers, um, shifts on the CRT. You're gonna go ahead and conduct combat. You're gonna see how combat works when we actually do um, the partial playthrough. After that, you're done with your, um, you're done with your impulse. It now goes to the second operations impulse, which means the other player, so say in the first turn, right, it's first the Germans are drawing, or picking one, I should say, just to be clear. And then in the second impulse, the Allies will go ahead and draw a marker, activate those units, and then run down through the operations impulse. Once all the chits are drawn, and by the way, once one side is done with their command markers, the other side say they have two or three left, they get to draw each of them then in turn until they are out. Once both sides are out, you're done with the operations, first and second operations impulses, you move on to the return phase. You know, each player will go ahead and move all their air and naval support units on the map to their available display. Um, remove all reserve activation markers on the map, which there are reserve units that can be activated with each of the army groups. You kind of choose, and once you activate them, you go ahead and place a reserve chit on the unit just to show that it has been activated already, so you can't activate it again. And then after that is the game turn interface, which you go ahead and check for, you know, if it's the last game turn of the scenario, the game comes to an end. Um, players check for victory. If it's not the end of the, the last game turn, each player moves a game turn marker because each side has their own. Um, move it to the next turn, and uh, you move on to the next turn and uh, go from there. Start over at the beginning with the initiative phase. So 
I think I covered it, um, the basics anyway. Let's go ahead and dive into a at least partial playthrough, maybe play through the first turn or part of the first turn. I want you guys to really see the game in action. Um, I will have a full overview and review coming as well. So but let's go ahead and I think we'll cover the overview. Let's jump into the actual playthrough. All right, beginning of the playthrough. So initiative phase, don't need to worry about it the first turn, or if we do look at it, the Germans have the initiative because again, they control all of their cities. So during the first turn, the Germans actually go to, go ahead and pick from their markers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the Manstein plan, which that is one that I had already selected. I mentioned before, there's three different plans, uh, markers. You pick one of them. If you're playing a two-player game, you're supposed to keep it secret. Obviously, it's just me playing solitaire, so I can't keep, keep it secret for myself. So I went ahead and picked that and had it ready. So what does that do? Um, I'm going to go ahead and have the chart pop up for command marker um, command markers to show you the activation. I, I mentioned it in the overview. So looking at it for the Manstein plan or Manstein plan, they get to activate the PGK, which is right, is going to be the Panzer Corps over here. Um, they get to activate up to four air units as well, which that's a lot. And then it also says three cores stack in rough remainder of game. So there's the train, right? You have clear train, you have some swamp land, you have the woods train, the Ardennes primarily, that's really gonna affect the game. And then you have this rough terrain here. So traditionally, you can only have one core, one single core stack, but now with the Germans, they're gonna be able to stack three cores, the allies still only stack um, one core. There's gonna be a two a sh attack shift, two to the right, um, which we'll explain in a second, uh, once we have our first combat, which will be very shortly. Um, then this uh, chit, it says it's available all game turns, which it's available really at the first. Uh, you, you, know, you put it in the cup, once it's drawn, um, it's done, which if you next to it, it says disposition remove, basically it'll be used this turn and then it is done for the rest of the game. So let's set it here as a little bit of a reminder. So, um, command marker, we're going to already made our bins, um, refit phase. Again, that's first turn it's skipped. So we're already in the operations phase, um, going ahead and drawing command segment, drawing from, um, the cup or picking it. All right. So Manstein plan. Um, reinforcement segment, there's no reinforcements on the first turn. By the way, up here, you can see the turn track. It's upside down for you guys. That's okay. German turn initiative, and then allies right down here, ally turn. The other side of the initiative if they somehow capture German city. Okay. Reinforcements, there are none. Air operations. Here's where we look and says, well, we can do four air units. So what are we going to do with them? Well, we see PGK is right here. Those, these are our uh, units. And I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. We have our mobile supply, which again, I mentioned before, supply is very important. Determining an LOC, line of communication is important. So that's going to matter for a lot of things. Combat, um, especially, you want to go and have all your units in supply. Basically, it's from a supply source in Germany. Trace a hex to your um, supply unit. And then the supply from the supply unit's um, movement factor. So it's four. So one, and it's by hex, by the way, not actual like terrain cost, right? So one, two, three, easily in supply. Um, and then all their units just have to be within their movement factor from the supply source. So, so the supply source, eventually they'll, they can get outside of their supply, you know, kind of over here in, in Western France, but in all this part, generally speaking, you shouldn't have too much trouble supply. Both sides, you have to track it. All right. So we have our units here. Like I said, zoomed in a little bit. You can see them. Um, we're going to be attacking here for sure. So air operations, I mentioned that we have up to four we can assign here. We have six to start um, the game with. Let's go ahead Let's go ahead and definitely assign one to that hex and basically deploy him to the hex for um, for ground attack, right? He's going to help us during tactical combat, which there is a combat results table shifts, and it mentions, you know, air zone, plus, minus, etc. Obviously, it's going to um, help us being having that advantage. Um, in addition to the normal shift that we get from the, um, the actual plan, etc., um, we can do three more if we want. Let's go ahead and I look for cities here. Let's go ahead and do, well, there's nothing there. I don't think we have to worry too much about Amsterdam or Rotterdam. Let's go ahead and try to bomb Antwerp here. So we'll do city bombing Antwerp. And let's go ahead and do city bombing. Let's see, where should we bomb? Yeah, no, no. Let's bomb the mirror down here as well. So we'll try city bombing. So let's go ahead and roll. City bombing, super simple. We have a, a strength of two on our air units. We're just gonna go ahead and roll on the air warfare table. Um, it, the anti-aircraft from a base city without any air superiority, any you know allied 
aircraft to fight us is going to be a one. So we take our two minus one is just one. So it's plus one. Look on our air warfare table. Draw that pop up. Roll to one. So one on plus one is AL1. The attacker loses one. So unfortunately, he loses one. And then he's immediately moved to the airstrikes and special forces utilized box. So not so good there. Over here, let's see if we do better. Over here in Antwerp, let's go ahead and roll again. A six, much better. Um, a six is going to be, excuse me, just checking it, city bombing, DL1, place a bomb marker on the hex. And what that is, so DL1, place a bomb marker on the hex. The city's affected as follows. It loses its defensive terrain for all players. Um, it's no longer a depot or port. And any river hex side is not affected. So no effect with the rivers, but why would bombing affect the river anyway? So now it's bombed. Perfect. And now we go ahead and we send him back to the utilize anyway, because he doesn't remain around. He's bombed the city. Okay, so now we know that in the future, when we go to attack that city, they're not going to get a, a bonus for, um, you know, defensive works because it's been bombed. And that does not go away later. Okay, uh, I'd say that's it. I think we could have done one more, but I think we're going to call it with three air units. So we're done with the air operations segment. Let's go ahead and go into ground movement. Now they're all right here. And honestly, that's who we've activated, right? These are the units we've activated. They're all in that hex, remember? Um, there's no need to move them because we're actually going to attack into the Utrecht hex. So no movement into it, right? We're just attacking the adjacent hex. So we'll go ahead and kind of skip our ground movement and go into combat. All right, we're gonna have combat against uh, against this unit here. So let's see, let's go ahead and add her up and see what we're doing. So we're it's just like standard most games, right? Check our combat factors, add them up. So six, five, it's 11, um, plus three, 14. No other um, bonuses for us at that point. So we have 14. And then what we do is we go ahead and divide that by the defender's total. The defender only has one. They just have like a garrison unit there. So 14 divided by one, obviously is going to be 14, which is 1400, which then you multiply by 100 to get a percentage. That's how this game works. So I'll have the um, combat results table pop up. Um, you can see that there's, by the way, there's assault combat and mobile combat. Mobile combat table is when you're only using mobile um, mechanized units, um, which in this case we are, we are, so we would use that table. Um, so what it is, is you have, we had 14, right? Well, 14, you multiply it by 100, so 1,400%. That's the percentage you'll check on the chart. Now, obviously that's, it only goes up to 700, as you can see, 700%, so we are at that point. Now, here's where we kind of look at it, though. Remember, there may be some shifts. So, see this blue outline here? You can check the terrain key here. That is an allied minor fortification. For a minor fortification, that is a shift of minus one on the combat. So we go down one on the, um, so let me go, let's go to an order. Attack declaration, we did it. Special forces, oh, we should have done them. Well, too late, let's not do them. Um, CRT, figured out which one. Combat strength, we did. Combat shift, terrain, air support, SF units, command marker. Um, so that's what we're figuring out here. So we down, down to there, but then remember, we have a plus two to the right because of the Manstein plan. So really it's gonna go back to 700 plus percent. So we're definitely gonna have a big advantage here. So let's go ahead and roll here. And we rolled a one, are you serious? So one is DP. DP means, what does it mean? DP means defender panics. Defender loses two steps. Surviving defenders retreat two hexes. The attacker may pursue. He loses two steps, which he's only one hex or one step unit, excuse me. So he is eliminated. Place him in the eliminated units box. So we get to go ahead and advance into that hex. We really didn't need to use aircraft for it, honestly. Because we were already had overwhelming advantage. So we get to go ahead and move into that hex. Um, now, as, you know, mobile units, so we moved into um, that hex. As mobile units, we can advance there and we can advance one more. Any of our mobile units could. Um, so, for instance, we could advance into Amsterdam here, which I think we're going to go ahead and do. So, let's go ahead, our mobile units here. Let's go ahead and just advance them. Yeah, we'll go ahead and advance into Amsterdam, taking control of Amsterdam. Now, if we take control of Amsterdam and Rotterdam, then the Dutch will surrender. So, all right. So, we go ahead and place our uh, unit off that. Well, actually, he stays there because... He's kind of providing air support in general for the rest of the turn here. Okay, 
Um, that was the combat segment. So now we're done with our impulse. So now it's going to go ahead and go over to the allies. All right. Now it's the allies get to go do their, um, the second, second operations impulse. So they're going to go ahead and draw from their cup. And unlike the Germans, I got to pick the allies, just draw randomly and they drew the Netherlands. Oh, they actually drew, drew the Dutch. So I'm um, going to go ahead and set it there. So just like we talked about before, um, drawing it, seeing kind of what they can do. Now, they don't have any air units. They're not going to be able to take advantage of anything air. Uh, nothing that would have help them in the battle. Um, so you draw that. You check for reinforcements. Again, there's not going to be any reinforcements on the first turn. Air operations, they don't have any air. It's no good there. So let's go to ground movement. For them, they only have these two units at this point because, well, and they can't move the, the garrison unit. And they have a garrison unit here that can't move. So obviously, they don't want to really get cut off here. They're not liking what they're seeing. So what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and move. Um, let's see. What do you think we should do, guys? Should we stand strong and try to delay them? Or should we hold? You know what? Actually, they're going to stand strong and delay. They know they're going to get steamrolled, but you know what? They're going to try to hold back the Germans as long as they can. However, there's no need to attack because that would they would just be annihilated. So they're going to go ahead and kind of skip their turn. They're not going to take any actions. They're just going to stand strong and try to delay, knowing these Germans are going to have to attack them to, to get through them to continue on. So that's what they're going to do. They're just going to go ahead and sit tight. So that's it for the Allied Command Marker draw. All right, now it's the Germans' turn. And by the way, with the Command Markers, the German one, because it's not coming back, I, I went ahead and moved it off the board. The Dutch one is going to be placed in this Command Markers box here to show it's been drawn and used, but it will go back for next turn uh, unless they're knocked out of the, the fight here. So, all right, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to draw. Let's go ahead and draw. Command segment. Draw randomly. Okay, Army Group A. So Army Group A, can activate Army Group A, plus up to three air units. Um, Army Group, we have B here, A is right here, and then C is over here. So it is the green units here. It's not color-coded on here, kind of wish it was, but you can see it's Army Group A, these green units right through here. So, all right. So first step, again, would be reinforcements are on air operations. They can do up to three. So looking at kind of... Who they'd be attacking here. Hmm. I don't know if they need to use any. Well, actually, probably right there, huh? Yeah, that's what they're going to do for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and assign an air unit to provide ground support and fighting right here. Okay. Now they're going to go ahead and move on to the ground movement segment. These guys are going to stay right here. He will go ahead and cross over. So he'll move into this hex. His four movement, clear hex costs one, and then there's a uh, river hex side, that's another one, so two. So you can go ahead and move pretty easily. And I'll just shift him a little bit to show that he moved. They'll stay right there because they're going to be attacking here. He will join them. In addition, we're going to go ahead and move these guys right here. Let's see. Yep, and then they're going to go ahead and move, which in the woods here, um, yeah, they're going to be able to move. All they have to do is move one because we're going to move right here. Units do exert a zone of control, so once they move into this enemy zone of control, they're going to be stopped anyway. They can't go ahead and move past it. And we'll go ahead and leave the supply unit there. Um, yeah, doesn't really matter. He's safe right there. And let's go ahead and move these. Yeah. Let's move them down as well, down here into Luxembourg here in its rough terrain. Remember, because of Manstein's plan. Oh, actually, they can't go and hang on, hang on, hang on. It's, a, it's three core size oh no i violated stacking rules i just realized oh i'm cheating <laughs> i just realized i violated stacking rules because he can only have up to three um, core sized in um, rough terrain and he is an army sized the four x's right obviously so i violated the rules right there oh that's a bummer let's go ahead and just say that he was doo -doo -doo. oh no what am i gonna do um well man that kind of gums up the works a little bit all right, we'll say he was back. He was, let's see, over here. Oh, no, he would have been with him. He can't. Okay, he's back up right here. Fair enough? Fair. Um, then he'll go ahead and move into the hex with the supply unit. So I don't want to cheat here and violate the stacking rules of the game. It's a big no-no in hex and counter games, guys. Okay, all right. So we've done our movement. Are we good on movement? I think we are. Let's go ahead and transition into the combat segment. And, yeah, we're going to be attacking this fortress here, Eben Emil. Evan Emil trying to take them. And they do have they have a um, static defender unit. And then they have 
the six strength infantry an army actually so for the belgians that's going to be the toughest one we've seen but uh we're gonna go ahead and figure out figure out the all the modifiers and uh get into it all right i'm gonna zoom in here for the combat so again we have these three hexes are gonna be attacking into this hex for belgium right here um go ahead and run through the combat procedure so attack declaration that's what we're doing now we're gonna do special forces we are gonna use them so remember the dotted line that's a uh, allied fortress we're gonna go ahead and use one of our special forces units over here and we commit him to the battle what that does is he may be able to destroy the fortress before we even um, get the negative modifier. So you can see there's numbers on here, little pips on dice, one through f one and five, and there's a little dash. It's one through five. It's very simple. We just roll a one through five, or roll a one d six. Should say and hope for a one through five for the Germans. Got a three, so the fortress is destroyed. So we go ahead, and now he's re uh, removed from the game. Can only use we only have two of them, and once they're used, they're used. And then we take one of our fancy little destroyed fort markers and go ahead and place it there just to show that uh, they're not going to get that bonus from that terrain bummer for the allies okay let's kind of move over units a little bit so we can kind of see what we're attacking with all right so we did the special forces declaration now we'll do the crt determination um attacker chooses we have you know infantry non um mechanized therefore it's going to be the assault combat results table right here by the way, I use my nice little, these nice little red cubed on the table, but that just helped me to keep track of where it is. So it does not come with the game. You have to provide your own fancy red cube, or I can sell you this one, $9.99, free shipping. All right, combat strength determination. Very simple, of course. Add them up. So eight, all the attackers anyway. Eight, four, that's 12. Eight, total of 20. And then eight, 28. Add up the defenders, six and two. That's eight. So 28 divided by eight. I'm going to have to get a calculator out, guys. I apologize. Is 3.5, which multiplied by 100, 350%. So on my little chart, 350%. Okay. That is the uh, combat strength determination. Now go ahead and apply our um, combat shifts. So what are the shifts? Well, the train, it's clear. No, nothing there. Fortification. Oh, except we destroyed the fort, so we're good there. Ah, we have our air units providing ground support. Therefore, we get a, it goes up. So it goes from the three, 399 to the 400 to 499%. Um, there's no naval support. Everyone's in supply. Nothing else special going on. It was a regular command marker. Um, and again, the defender has no special bonuses, so it's going to be under the 400 to 499%. Let's go ahead and roll the attacker. See what happens here. A three, three is, what is that? DW, DW, well, that's defender withdraws. Defender retreats one hex, attacker may pursue. If the defending contains an intact fortification, converts result to a stalemate. We destroy the fortification, so they will have to retreat. All right, so just like I thought, um, because the fortress unit, the fortress eliminated and that garrison, he has no movement factor, he's eliminated automatically because he's forced to retreat. Bummer for him. Um, however, the Belgian army here is able to retreat. He's going to go ahead and retreat across the Meuse over to here to kind of act as a little bit of a backup over here. So we get to go ahead and move some units in. Who do we want to move in? Um, we want to keep, kind of keep the front line intact. So let's move this army unit in here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and move them, um, seizing that area right there. So good for the Germans. Not so good for the Belgium, although... They did get to keep their army. He was lucky that, and they were a little higher, any higher, and he, I believe he probably would have been either eliminated or at least reduced down from two steps to at least one step. So, okay, that's it for the combat segment. So it goes on to the allies. All right, let's go ahead and draw for the allies. Um, and I placed the army group A marker and the command marker box over here probably ended after this one i think you guys are getting a good idea how it plays you know here's the deal you draw the command markers you know you're moving or attacking you know there's some specialized rules but you're starting to see them destroyed forts um the supply is not a factor again it's not generally a factor until it's pushed maybe a little farther west in france but it's simple right you're tracing hexes amount of hexes to your mobile supply unit such as where's one right here i thought i just saw one. Oh, well under here's one right here um and then to your units um and it's pretty simple. So anyway, let's go ahead and draw for allies, see what they do. 
Definitely not going to play a full game. It's just with hex counter games, it's a little harder to film an entire playthrough. Ah, third army group. So third army group is over here. So this is the white units right here. So um, third army group, check your chart. For the allies, third army group, they activate the third army group and one air unit. So what we'll do, first off, like I said, reinforcements, there are none, air operations. Ah, what are they going to do? Let's go ahead. Let's send... The Allies are going to send with their air units. They don't like all this air superiority that the Germans are rocking. So they're going to go ahead and send right over here this hex to attack. And they're going to go ahead and attack the Germans there. So Allied versus German air units. Super simple. Check the air warfare table. Attacker minus defender. Attackers two. German uh, defenders two. So that's a zero. So they're going to roll on it. Now use the fancy blue die. Again, provide your own dice. Or I'll sell this one for $9.99. A three... On a zero is no result whatsoever. So they're just going to hang out there together um, until they fight again. Or do they go back? Let's see. Hmm. I think. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and uh, just leave them there. Maybe they'll have some fun. Uh, they can battle out here in a little bit. So, all right. So third army group, what are the allies going to do? So unfortunately for them, they drew the chit that not a whole lot of units. They have... Their mobile supply here, but basically it's like defender, right? Defensive fortress unit, which makes sense because this was the, you know, the Maginot line right here, right? Up through here. Well, and then blocked by the train. Then obviously the Ardennes here. So what are they going to do? They only have the one, um, the one army unit right here, this infantry. I think they're going to hang tight. I know I hate to not do anything with the allies, but here's the deal. Especially in this campaign, right? For the most part, it was the allies kind of on the defensive Germans pushing, Germans pushing. There were some minor counterattacks. Most of them didn't go anywhere. And later in the game, you would see, I'm not going to play through that long, but you would see, especially the first army group, right? That's the core of where you'd see the primary counterattacks, um, you know, between the British and then the French um, units. The French have some mobile units here, some mechanized, some uh, tanks, etc. They can kind of get them active and push back a little bit. So, but as for the third army group, I'm going to go ahead and call it with them and say that they're not going to do anything because they're trying to hold the line here. So they could try to sweep up. Hmm. Well. No. Because that. So I mentioned before seizing cities. So the towns don't count. It's the yellow, the cities. So for instance, we talked about, um, I said if the. Ally sees a German city, right? You think, well, right about right there. That's just a town. It is a supply point, but it's just a town. See if the allies take it. It doesn't, you know, and he could take it right now. It wouldn't affect the war other than the supply, which maybe, but, you know, I don't think long-term that'll help because honestly, they're going to get to take it back. So he's just going to sit tight, sit in his defenses here. So again, and that's one reason this game also works pretty well solo is that the allies are really more on the defensive. It's really more about the Germans, you know, doing their attacks and then allies kind of reacting and then trying to hold the line and hold them back. So... Let's go ahead and call it for the um, for the allies here. Kind of skip their turn and go ahead and place it in the command marker box. All right, we'll do at least one more here. So for the Germans, they're going to go ahead and draw, and they drew uh, Army Group B. Army Group B is so activate Army Group B, which are the gray units up here, um, along with their um, three aircraft. Yep, three air units in general. So... What do you want to do here? Let's go ahead. It was special what they get to do. They have the airborne unit that did the landing. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with him. All right. So the German airborne core here, airborne core, excuse me. He's going to go ahead and move and land. And what he can do, he can go up to 10 hexes away. And I think what we're going to do, and this is where I think the, the Dutch made a little mistake, or maybe I made a mistake because the Allies left uh, Rotterdam unopposed. So he's going to go ahead, one, two, three, four, five, six, easy. And he's going to go ahead and land in Rotterdam. Uh-oh. With Amsterdam and Rotterdam now controlled by the Germans, that means the Dutch are knocked out of the war. What do they do? Pretty simple. All their combat units are removed from the map. Their RP is removed from the game, RP track. Um, and then the Netherlands command marker is also removed because it will no longer be drawn because they are knocked out of the war. And then you go ahead and place all those units. They're count as eliminated units for victory point purposes. So I go ahead and just place them all in the eliminated units box. Good news for the Germans. Definitely not good news for the Allies. Continuing, since it was um, Army Group A, um, and they went ahead and were able to knock the Dutch out of the war here, these units are going to move, and they're probably going to try to pivot over here, 
to try to move down into Belgium. So let's go ahead and just do um, getting to the, um, well, actually, I skipped the air operations because I knew that I wasn't too worried about it. So just FYI, it would have been right. Reinforcements, none. Air operations, I didn't need to do any. Feeling very confident in the first stage of this battle, this campaign. So let's go ahead and start moving. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, crossing the river. One, two, three. And then you can't move that far. Uh-oh. Getting strung out a little bit. That's what happens in war, right? One, two, three, four. Go ahead and stack with him. And that's you can see. Uh, mechanized here is seven movement. Ooh. One, two, three, Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I'll go ahead and stack with him. And move our supply down a little bit and get a little closer. He has supply from the Ruhr right there. So, one, two, three. Actually, he's out of, <laughs> he's out of supply right now, but they were, they were within supply of the actual supply source. So, one, two, three. And move right here. One, two, three. Yep, he's within range of the supply source, so. All right, he's good there. Movement, movement, and there are no JC units. They're not going to have a combat, but they are already moving. Um, not in Belgium yet. They're just moving through, moving through the uh, the Netherlands right now. But they will be encroaching probably next turn. One, yep. So they're going to start probably get. Yep, they'll be able to get here and start attacking um, Antwerp next turn. So not looking too good for the Belgium either. That's a lot of a lot of German units moving down. Not to mention the. Panzer Corps here, mechanized Panzer Corps ready to move in. So not looking good for them. Uh, that was it for movement. Again, there's no combat. So we are done with Germans. Uh, Army Group B goes over to the command marker box. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, one more allies. And then I think we're going to call it. So let's see what they do. Belgium. Okay, so the Belgium will go ahead and activate. Um, they have no reinforcements and then no air, unfortunately, for <laughs> them. Um, again, I'm sure they had an air force, but just not enough ready to affect it at this scale. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I think what they're going to do, strong, strong. That's, that's almost doomed there, but they kind of, you know what? I think they're going to go on the offensive a little bit. They're sick of sitting back. So what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and attack, try to take their uh, fortress while it's destroyed, but, you know, take that hex back. Even, even a meal. So I'm going to attack even a meal with these two. So again, um, movement. They're just not going to move because they're just going to attack from there. I'm going to attack that hex. Let's see six, seven, eight, nine, ten versus eight. Um, and then we're going to do is he's crossing a river, but he's not. So they don't have to take the negative for crossing the river. Um, so I said it was ten. So ten divided by eight equals one point two five. So times one hundred is one hundred twenty five percent. Oh boy, not so good for them. Um, terrain, no, it's clear terrain. The fortifications actually is destroyed. So even for the Germans now, they don't get the benefit of it. Um, there's air, but there's both air for both sides, so they cancel each other out. I think that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and roll on that table. Not looking too good. It's only the 100 to 149 percent. Need to roll high. Roll high. Roll high. High. Oh, a four. What's that? A stalemate. So stalemate is defender loses one step, attacker loses one step. Um, so he will be reduced down. He has four steps total, so he goes down to three. I think you see the stripe there to show he's reduced. Um, attackers go ahead and pick one. They're going to pick this unit. It's a little weaker in the Ardennes anyway. Hopefully it doesn't uh, hurt them in the back. Yeah, because then we'll keep the stronger unit um, at a higher strength. So they damage the Germans. Germans aren't indestructible. It's, and that's how the game would go. As you get going, Germans start wearing down a little bit. You know, it's not just all Germans advancing, taking over. As as happened historically, low countries especially pretty much fall um, pretty quickly. But France usually holds out decently. Again, I know long-term-ish, right? They fell in, what, six weeks? So really, they didn't hold out very well. But in the game turns, um, they'll, you know, they'll last a little while uh, before they do fall um, in most of my games, I should say. So, okay, I think that's it. Um, Belgium, they're done. So I think we're going to call the game there, at least call this video there. All right, everyone, hopefully that's enough. I know it wasn't a ton of gameplay, but... Again, with Hex Encounter games, they're just hard to show off on video. Um, you know, I know some people will just kind of point a camera at it and just, like, wish for the best. You can't really see much. You know, I do the zoom-in factor. I film at 4K, so I can zoom in, and it still looks okay. You can at least read it, right? Uh, hopefully you can. Let me know below um, in the comments below. 
But I hope you guys get an idea of the game, right? So, you know, the Germans, they're going to be advancing. You can see they're moving up pretty quick, especially the low countries. I mean, their next turn, when it rolls around, I mean, they're going to be advancing. And in fact, the um, PGKs, right, the... Uh, the mobile units, the Panzers here for the Germans, they're going to get, they have another activation, remember, because we used Manstein's plan to activate them. So really they have an activated a command marker in the cup. So they're going to get to move. And I don't know if they can reach there. They're going to try probably to reach Antwerp. Maybe they can, maybe they can't, but they're going to be moving up, um, you know, next turn. Army Group A, or excuse me, Army Group B for the Germans are going to be moving up. France, they'll get to activate Army Group 1. It's probably the big one that we didn't do. That's okay, though. Um, it would be all of these units. So this big group of tan goldish units combined with the British, right? French and British here. You're going to get to start advancing and then they're going to create, you know, more of a defensive line, maybe outside of France, you know, but again, you got the Germans coming through the Ardennes you have the Germans coming through the low countries here. It's a little more static, but that was traditional too, right? That was the campaign was, you know, it's historically accurate that you kind of, kind of stalemate over here for a while. Germans weren't pushing, could kind of anchored the defenders here, kept them busy because they knew the main thrust was coming through the low countries into, into France, um, along the coast. So, all right, that's Manstein's War, Decision in the West, 1940. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, I don't have a ton of gameplay, sorry. Um, just Hex Encounter games. Just don't go great as much on video, I don't think. But if you want to see more, let me know probably going to call it here with the videos um on the gameplay i will have an overview review for my final thoughts um if you can't tell i enjoy the game though so a little bit of a spoiler for my review i do enjoy it i'm now getting into all the details of what i don't like and do like in that video so comment below let me know if you've played this game if you're looking to picking it up now if this helped at all in your decision making um again hex encounters i mentioned this many times before in my other videos a little slower on the videos i know it i think people probably get a, it's a little bit i don't say a bad impression but I've covered many hex counter games. I know I do blind swords on video. At one point, I had you know comment from someone who was like, "Oh, it's so slow." Well, it's slow because you're I'm filming it, especially and hex counter games on video are extra slow, right? It's not a quick card game or something. I mean, it's a little bit more planning, moving, counting factors for movement, combat. Really hard to edit that out to make it a super quick game. But I did want to show the game off since it was review copy. So, all right, I think that's enough. Until uh, next time, guys. Later.